come to tour the moon. You know, I have all an army and actors coming at four, yeah? Two. And at two, you're fucking kidding me. When you're in it, it's so wild and out there. Did you find the aliens? Too many moon raves, I'm moon high, sun side to me back. You know, I only looked at the moon a few months ago and realised that when I looked at it, it was round and not flat. How does the squid fit into it? <laughs> Tour de Moon, it's called. When's that? When is that? Help her, be nice to her, gentle. We're dealing with a bunch of artists, right? So they're not very good with emails, they're not very good with contracts. No, 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 don't worry. No, sing. No, 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 no. I can't have kids crying like that. It's not possible. I joined Tour de Moon because uh, I'm a mermaid and um, I'm not very happy on Earth. <laughs> I want you to close your eyes, take a deep breath, and I want you to think. The light is flashing down on me. I see all the cars, the colors, the flavors. It reminds me of Mars. <laughs> what is Tour de Moon? To the moon is a festival. Fucking up. I don't push it anymore. I just wait. All right. Well, I'm just waiting then. Marina, this is. Yeah, they're gonna call me in two minutes, so you're gonna have to be on the coffee situation. I mean, there is nothing worse for me, like not having a mug of coffee. This is just like, honestly, I'm going to do a shit interview because. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and we are live right here live from the village on the ground with Marina Terranova. Marina Terranova with the person behind the camera. Marina Terranova is one of a kind. Can I just set it up for you guys? I know, I just have to see. press my, um, like. I cannot do it with... You're not fully in focus. Do you want to put it on the tripod? Yeah, maybe? Put on it. If you want to be square, we're going to yes. make you square. Who are you? Yes, who are you, Marina? I'm Marina Terranova. And... What do you do? I work at Tour de Moon and the Libanon Studio. Okay. I used to be called... What's it called? Uh, film coordinator. Film coordinator, yeah. But now I am... Uh, the assistant editor and producer of mm -hmm. this very documentary that you are watching. This very one. You gotta pick a team, yeah, that you're gonna go and save the planet within it. Who are the people you're picking? Okay. Well, I would pick Nelly because, as I said before, yeah, we should yeah. get so, uh, stuff yeah, yeah. done. Ah! Intense director. Oh. I would take John for the vibes. You know what? It feels so good to hear my name. I mean, obviously, my girlfriend's part of Twitter, so I'm saying, girl. No paparazzi, no paparazzi. Am I, am I even in the shot? You, you okay. completely are in the shot. So give me a name and I'll tell you who they remind me of. Uh, and I'm quick, fast, not even thinking. Victoria. <laughs> it's a shit show. <laughs> See, it's not easy, isn't it? Not easy? <laughs> it's not easy. Yes, Victoria Beckham. Anjali. Yeah. I'm just going to ramble a bit. <laughs> Anjali, I'm going to say... Uh, oh, this is not easy, man. I don't know the parameters of this um, game, innit? Don't let anyone tell you we don't have what it takes. We have everything we need to succeed. And in 2022, we'll put the best of British creativity and innovation, culture and heritage on show in a year-long festival of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. If there is any more nature on the other side of the moon. And how do we know if there is any more nature on the other side of the moon? Hello. Oh, 
Jesus, you scared the shit out of me. I am the moon. I am a celestial body and some people actually think I'm made out of cheese. But enough about me. Who are you? Fuck. So, Ilari Chuknes he just joined us, director of commissioning and commissioning. <laughs> Hi, my name is Hilary O'Shaughnessy and I am Director of Commissioning for Unboxed, which was a programme of 10 commissions that took place across the four nations of the UK in 2022. It's a unique collaboration in terms of it wasn't just the commission teams had to collaborate, it was the four governments of the UK and that meant a lot and a huge amount of administration and also a huge amount of collaboration to make sure that everybody was happy with what we were about to do. <laughs> A warm welcome wherever in the world you currently are. When Unboxed was first conceived, we had only two objectives, to bring people together and to celebrate creativity. We announced an open call for creatives from all over the UK to present us with their ideas for how this could be done. I'm Nelly Belayoun and I'm the director of Tour de Moon. This opportunity came about to actually like apply to this national wide bid to make a national wide festival for a festival that was going to be a STEAM festival, science, technology, engineering, the arts and mathematics. And so since I've been doing this kind of work for about a decade, I feel quite confident that perhaps I could add something to this platform. The question was whether or not the funders and the commissioners would go for something that would be really risky. Tour de Moon is a series of festivals, satellite events, nightlife experiences, in a travelling convoy inspired by the moon. Tour de Moon aims to open conversations about future utopias and support the creation of new work by creatives, makers, writers, nightlife artists and performers aged 18 to 25. I think what attracted me to the idea of Tour de Moon was that it was going to employ so many people to be artists themselves, that it was really going to spread the money around to all of these artists to interpret this really, really strong central concept in their own way and have their own medium to express that. And I thought that was really exciting. This is ideally what we should be doing with this money. It should be going everywhere and it should be sparking ideas in all types of people all across um, the UK. This is home. This is, yeah, please. Hi. 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 Are you okay to be in film? Yeah, of course. Oh, cool. Who's at our feet and sandwiches then? To a certain extent, the thing we love about Tour de Moon is that it doesn't know what it is yet because the people who it wants to take part in it haven't told you what it is yet. And that's where it's unique to, to the other nine and why we loved it so much is because of this highly devolved model. I mean, that's like geeky speak, but the nice speak is it's not going to know what it is until its hundreds of contributors have, have let us know. I knew that our model of commissioning would be about decentralizing creativity and decentralizing funds. So I knew that it would be really risky because within a, a time frame that was so short, you know, like from the time where we actually got the award and the contract signed to the moment where we had to actually have the life festival, we had five months. Obviously, you have to sit with that risk and you have to allow some of that to, to, to not go well and change course and do other things. But I'd much rather that we went down that road with those projects and did something really risky and try something new because you learn so much along the way. I love big projects and I love very challenging projects. Uh, and I love especially when they are impossible projects. You know, what are the chances that Algerian, Armenian, French person can actually win a multi-million pound grant from the UK government to make a nationwide festival? Um, and actually that happened. I just need the numbers. 50% uh, down for the last decade, yeah. And then how many percentage the nightlife industry represents in the UK? Just get me this right. 66 billion per annum. Here you go. That's what I need to know. Yes. Do we have the mushroom for Henry? The what? Like the, um, <laughs> the little stool. You know, I stool. Like, I'm gonna, I can't believe I'm like putting the financial <laughs> time on the, on the stool, but. Yeah. One of our commission at Tour de Moon is to decolonize, right? Mm -hmm. I personally, coming from where I come from, you know, whether it's from Algeria and Armenia, I never believe that, you know, this is something that just has spun smoothly. Mm -hmm. When you work with public institutions, and I've done this kind of work with NASA, the United Nations and others, 
you need to really like get go like straight from the start and that was kind of like the conversation with unbox which was really interesting from the the start which was to actually make them understand the importance of decentralization in the way that we wanted to do this festival which was to really empower these funds that we won is something that we're going to reallocate to where we think public service should have gone mm -hmm. to, meaning nightlife workers and youth centre. We all know that there is like a reason why this entire economy is relying on nightlife. Mm -hmm. You know, actually yeah. 66 billion uh, of the UK industry comes down to actual like nightlife workers. Mm -hmm. Yet they are, the, they are the ones that didn't get any recovery, you know, fund. And then you the other side of the story, which is also like 50% of the youth centre closed down during COVID, 50% across the entire UK. And that's kind of like where we wanted the narrative to be. Some people Which, ran away from the festival immediately because of those narratives. Yeah, yeah. They, they were like, I just don't want anything to do with it. Were yeah, you ever yeah. in that position? Or were you always like, I can make something of this opportunity? Is yeah, 100%. Like, I mean, for me, it's always been really like, I just, you know, I looked into where the money came from. And for me, it came from the UK Treasury. Yeah. So it's like, this is exactly where I should be working. So I don't know, like, I, am I... Like, you got to help me? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean... Yeah, I, I think I think the most important thing is that people get what we're trying to do with the festival. And, and, and I think, you know, there is a lot happening. <laughs> there, there is a lot of split spinning plates. There's a lot of um, kind of like parts to it. But at the end of the day, the people that push our culture and our fun and our nightlife, they're, they're young people, they're people of colour, they're the LGBT community, they are people with ability issues you know there's there's lots of different kinds of people that that do all these things for society and I think a lot of the time they don't get the funding or the chance to really you know do something big and this is what the open calls are about it's giving money and funds to those people to like try and do something big and really try and push their creative ideas forward so you know people are going to have reactions but like bottom line for us is that's what we're trying to do and that's why we've done the grants we've done them and that's why going to the places that we're going to and that's why all these ideas are so crazy and out there and 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 all over the place because we want to reach as many people as possible with this message i guess when the festival was conceived yeah presumably they weren't thinking of, of this were they or like what do you think the politicians had in mind when they said oh it'd be nice to have a festival but like, i couldn't conceive so like no one could conceive of this maybe look it got nicknamed the festival of brexit early on and people hate it for good reason and are very angry like everyone else, I saw like an article which had like, you know, Nigel Farage and a flag. And I was like, oh, my God, this sounds like a disaster. And then as soon as I got in, I realized that, no, it was the, the name is the only thing that represents any of that nonsense. And actually, there were really good people involved who wanted to do something different with this money. I don't deal with myths, right? I deal with what we're actually doing. And the mythology is for others to either, you know, carry on with or thing you know I, I I'm very interested in actuality and what we're and actually I only have time to do what we're actually doing um so I, I, you know I'd I can't get into that I, it's nonsense what would you say to like I don't know whether it was Theresa May or whoever who said well you need to teach them right you need to go and teach them that's the way like you need to go and say to them actually there is another alternative and actually perhaps you know time to go and leave the space to use yeah. to actually show you the way. No, but it's good to but understand my, that it is political. But, my, but, view, but yeah. any act of creation is political. It's not about me here telling you what you should believe. It's more like here are these like pluralistic multiverses of yeah. existence. They all coexisting with each other. Mm -hmm. And what we are trying to facilitate here is this conversation between all of them at the same time for the time being, for that specific moment in time, and actually beyond that, through the legacy project that will be coming out of this festival. The relationship with Unbox has been really interesting. Like, and with that, of course, very challenging, but in a positive manner, like things are moving. You know, it's like, it's a, it's a learning curve. Like we're teaching them how to progress. We are their worst nightmare, right, but okay. that's why we are taking place at night. Okay. We are Unbox's worst nightmare. Nelly describes Tour de Vin as like the after party or like Unbox's nightmare. Do you agree? <laughs>
<laughs> not the second bit. Uh, no, I think, you know, at the end of the day, we had we had first 290 teams to choose from and then 30 projects to choose from and we chose 10 and this was one. And there are very, very good reasons for that because it was exciting and joyous and interesting and like nothing we'd ever seen before. Hi, can you hear me? Where have you been? You don't visit anymore. All your crap is still here, but it's so quiet. There's not a crumb and no cookies either. I'm not blue. I'll breathe here to the end of time. Yeah, I knew I knew the entire background. Oh, you knew? Yeah, I knew about the background during the pitch. Oh, yeah. Um, and I remember really trying to kind of consider, like, what I want to do because I had just heard really critical views on the festival of Brexit. I agreed with a lot of them. I agreed with most of them. So I remember when Nelly first got in touch about it, I was like, okay, well, I'll do the pitch and kind of see, meet other team members, get maybe a better idea of what this is about. And I remember that point being like, okay, is this, well, I didn't know, I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but I kind of was like, am I, is this something yeah. I want to be a part of and I want to do? Welcome everyone, welcome to Tour the Moon. It is my greatest pleasure to welcome you here in Mission Control, live in the core of the Tour the Moon. We need to think about not repeating history. We need to start a fresh interdisciplinary space driven by the spirit of the imagination across science, technology and art. One of the key elements of the manifesto is improvisation. The moon bar. Drinks and cocktails are scientific experiments in their own right. Moon cinema is a cinematic experience that doesn't privilege the imagination of the dominant, but it facilitates and encourages the participation of the audience. Creates an immersive listening experience that uses sound to invite gentle yet powerful therapeutic processes. The Moon Commons is literally open to everyone and will have a focus on democracy, equality and sustainability. Moon Press is really urgent in our current social, political and environmental climates because we need radical shifts in our political systems that require creativity and innovation. Artificial intelligence, it's very scary. It's almost as scary as big tech itself or social media um, because the robots, after all, are coming for us. You basically just press the button like a walkie-talkie and you talk to the moon. Yeah, another thing I was thinking, I was like, I'm going to need coffee all day. It's going to be a long day. Oh my God, I'm going to my cat. Sorry, <laughs> this is just... No, I forgot. He's not. Sure, he's sure. not like the friendliest, but he's he's here. Hello. He's a big man cat. Do people move in the same place at the same time? You mean like together? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. some people travel in like little flotillas. Like they'll have two, Aww. three boats, and they'll like move together every time, which is really cute. I actually had, I had another job offer at the same time as this job offer and I remember being like okay one of these is a lot more stable and I know what it is like I know what I'm going to be doing right and the other one is tour de moon with Nelly who the hell knows and I was like one that one's temporary don't know what it is it's going to be mad it's going to be touring I don't know if there's going to be like backlash because of the festival of Brexit like thing you, yeah. um yes I'll just clip it here yeah, can that fine? Um, well, welcome to Moon Press. Hello, um, I'm Anjali, so I'm the Moon Press producer. Basically, Moon Press is a monthly publication that is released on every full moon. Um, so we've got a range of artists with poetry, essays, writings, dealing with a different theme every time. So it might be about nature and collectives, or it might be about art and archiving. So it kind of each month presents a different angle, somehow related to the moon, but also to publishing, art, politics, and kind of like all of the above. We're also uh, going to be releasing different objects and items. So kind of soon we'll be coming out with these seed packages so that um, people can use some of our moon planting guides from uh, issue four. When you release on the full moon, I realized the moon became a work deadline, <laughs> which sucked. I've never worked on according to the lunar cycles before like that that's never been a factor in my job um so that was interesting and also having like this kind of repeating cycle even if moon press was different every time there was still the same process we had to produce something every you know every four weeks and yeah definitely changed my relationship to the moon because when i'd see it i'd be like 
How far away are we from how big, how small? Is it waxing? Is it waning? Okay, interesting. Well, I don't sleep, which I think is a key component of being able to dream. If you are an emerging artist, if you love music, if you love the political and radical potential of music and all of the incredible things that it can do, Moon Orchestra is for you. If you're up for traveling the UK, then please come through and apply for um, the Moon Orchestra. We're trying to do so much. Like we're sending a crew of 21 people on the road, nine trucks, we're doing 14 locations, including a massive press shoot with a 12 meter by six meter screen. Can't wait I for mean, you to there see is it. No wonder that this was... The, the mission of the impossible. This is yeah. surreal. This is Archie. This, this is our giant squid right here. This is Archie, our giant squid. Squid brains are like donut shape. They're ring shaped so that when they eat, their, their esophagus goes through the middle. Through the head? Esophagus, it's like their throat. Wow. So that's so it goes through the middle. Yeah, yeah. so the, the mouth is here, swallows through the middle. <laughs> Because yeah, if we had a mic here, we'd have to swallow it through a brain. You need to have like a ring donut as well. Well, I was going to say, maybe it's a good time to talk about why is Archie actually on the Tour de Moon bus? <laughs> it was a yes, yes, yes. yes. Well, I was waiting for that. <laughs> Basically, well, we're thinking Archie is going to be like the spearhead that will sit on the convoy and allow us to talk about how animals are either affected by the moon, but then also how animals are adapted to life in the dark. Obviously, a lot of your program is about reigniting nightlife. There's a lot of amazing things that can be found in our collections that have that connection either to directly to the moon or to, to life in the dark. It's important to say that in the convoy, you have the big moon that is like leading the way, and on the same track, you have basically Archie. Archie. Change is the only constant, I suppose. Maybe home is more of a state of mind than, than a physical place. In this job, I've been forced to grow. And that is something that is really important, you know? Not just growing, you know, in skill, but growing in confidence. If you ain't been to the moon, come on, you already know. Big up the moon, big up the moon. You already know what it is. Hey, listen, we in the building. I'm an artist, I'm a creative, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an engagement specialist. I like to make things happen. I'm just here, you know, I'm just a hustler. This is my theory, my thesis, telekinesis. I might find this thesis, I might find these words don't mean shit. Mm -hmm. Food for thought, babies don't want to eat this. More time I don't speak, go keep up. I got a first class degree in politics, yeah? I never really used it, you get me? I come from a run-down estate in Barking called Gascoigne Estate. You get me, obviously, shout out to all the estates in the ends as well, not just my estate. You get me, I'm all about, you know, equality. Where's the energy? Where's the energy? Did you know the moon is rising? Yeah. Yeah. On a day-to-day -day basis, it's like, yeah, just basically, you know, distributing flyers, you know, going to different towns and cities, um, coordinating, you know, you know, efforts, community engagement efforts, which include like landing in an area and trying to chat to as many community groups and organizations as possible. And also, yeah, just cross communication, cross organization communication constantly. So we had young people, 18 to 25, that were essentially, you know, holding the organization um, accountable and being the youth voice for Tour de Moon. My remit, as I was running, learning and engagement was to, you know, establish this um, board and essentially keep the board running. I love the whole, the radical act of, you know, taking a, a, a fund, government fund, and really redistributing it to young creatives all across the country to make art. That for me is the best thing about this job. It's empowering. It makes me feel strong each day. And it allows me to kind of hold my head up as well, you know, um, to do my job because um, um, it's purposeful work. You know, doing a Robin Hood thing. Moon Convoy, we've just done a parade. 
we literally shut it down in Leicester. We had a madness parade happening with um, Can Samba, a Brazilian bateria that have literally travelled all the way from the top of the city centre, all the way to the bottom, shaking their booties, doing the most. A lot of pressure and everything was happening fast, you know? And there was uh, and expectations of you, always, ex always expectations of you that you may not even know. Imagine you've got expectations that you don't even know that you have expectations because everything's just moving fast. You can record an album right now. You can record a song. So what's happening here is we're writing and recording music with people who are coming in through the door. We have the orchestra on tour with us, nine talented musicians from around the world. I'm recording and producing, and we're putting together a collection of music that's going to represent what's happening on this tour. The Moon Orchestra is a group of nine different multi-hyphenated artists who are coming together to build an orchestra together that we are touring around as a part of the Tour de Moon Convoy. Personally, like it, or like even from like my family who like grew up in like a smaller town in the UK, like just how little access there is to spaces that challenge like what is normative and what is accepted. I feel like it's really important for me to be part of Tour de Moon considering like who I am and how I present as like a trans creator in the world. <laughs> and that it's important that I can create a safe space where rage and purification and fortification can be held, especially now during like the COVID-19 pandemic and the climate crisis and all the wars going around that we are actively choosing to create portals of care, of creativity and art um, and hold also in the performances that we're doing all around the UK also hold a space for grief. Talk to me. Is it every day you invent a new artwork on your face? Yes. Or, okay. Like, just depending on how I feel, it's fun though, because I feel like it's armor for my face. I feel like it's a grounding ritual mm. to kind of just like get ready for the day, feel good inside. Yeah. I feel like I'm really interested in like finding ways to like look kind of like beyond gender, I guess, like beyond like, like not to even look like I'm any kind, like I'm anything. Like I really am interested in looking like, like a freak. Like people Thanks, like, with like surveillance and stuff, people can like really track your face. So I feel like it's also like protection. Mm. So like you look different based on your makeup and you're not easily traceable. I just hear Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> Nelly yelling. Just a, just a She's going to lose her voice in two days. Okay, do I have everyone? Where is I think it's really important that Tour de Moon is bringing so much like radical creativity and ways of thinking that a lot of people don't have access to. There's kids, there's adults, there's elders, and everyone is coming together. And I think that that's so incredibly special. Disintegrating and evolving. Right now, like people need to be imaginative, people need to see creation, people need to see different ways of living because we're living through such hard times and having access to that is like a way to shift and start to rethink the world that we're living in so that, yeah, like Toward the Moon says, like we can build a new world, we can imagine a new world, we can imagine a new future. And we're here at our first stop on Toward the Moon here in Lechley and we're so, so stoked. We just dropped off all our equipment. We're gonna be performing every hour with the Moon Orchestra and Welcome to the Tour de Moon Multiverse. Hey! How do astronomers organize a party? They plan it. Here we 
are the finished product. Can you see the liquid inside? So apparently, this liquid glows in the dark. Allez viens Marina, on va aller voir. Let's uh, let's get going because we have to like organize the full um, the full setup for Moon Experience. We are literally negotiating at the moment uh, on all of these different venues in Newcastle, Leicester, and Southampton, which are our core cities. Welcome to Newcastle. These venues are either disused spaces or disused shopping malls that kind of like were left derelict over the time of COVID. And so it's kind of like part of the situation is for us to actually convince real estates that we should have access to this building for the time being of our show. I go and listen to one play, then that play stops. Here we go, we are at the entrance right there. We've just arrived. This is pretty phenomenal. I arrive, I have some kind of UV light on the side here. I have some mediation. Welcome, sign a waiver. Uh, you are gonna be taken into a very high strobe effect kind of like, uh, you know, experience. about four days to take in, four days to take out. You know, it's kind of like really, really short time frame to actually build these things. Got the blackout flaps. Okay, so the flaps, I'm gonna remove all these flaps. But then also convince and make sure that, you know, down the line there is policymaker involved, council involved, so that these spaces can be used for use and use center or immersive theatrical spaces or cultural spaces down the line. So the urban fabric of Leicester, Southampton and Newcastle can definitely be changed uh, by uh, actually the venue of Todd Moon. Uh, I, I will say that this show is only going to be as good as the delivery of the show, right? And you are essential in that. So we did this open call in Newcastle, Leicester and Southampton. So in the three different locations where we're going to go. And we asked them to each put some proposal together in line with some of the plays that we're going to have in Moon Experiences, which are all there to basically present human celebrations as we know them. Okay, are we going up? We need to speed up. <laughs> Where is Marina? Can you call Marina? Malena? Yeah, yes. where is Marina? What time does she get here? Mind the door. I want you to make me feel touching rock. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, I'm gonna put you straight. Let me mm. get that done. Okay. You make me a little choreography like. Uh, 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 uh. Then you go like. Leg, leg. Go, go. So just be um, be cheeky. You're kind of like teasing us and you're like, so you move and you're showing us you're dancing. I will encourage you to just really make sure that every time you perform your character, you just do it, but you do it differently. But I think what's really exciting about it, but at the same time a bit scary, is the fact that, you know, we have always a new rotation of actors in each of the cities and the, each of the actors only have like basically one day really to rehearse the text together and for us to like breathe them and direct them in the space. I wouldn't even trust Dora the Explorers map, let alone yours. No? I wouldn't even trust Dora the Explorers map, let alone yours. <laughs> yeah, very funny. As you can see, I am in a pray top shop, top man, a disused basically shopping mall that has been turned into a youth center where you're gonna be able to see new, never played, world premiere, you know, scripts uh, from new and up-and-coming, you know, scriptwriter, but also 
actors that you know might have started acting or just have their first acting job or some professional actors, but all of them between the age of 18 to 25. The scriptwriter obviously will be writing the script without actually having been in the space, and we need to then put it into performance. So when you are a scriptwriter, you're basically being told that you're going to be writing a play about human celebration, either carnival, either ritual, either uh, birthday, either matrimony and like giving birth or things like that. No, you're going to be a Libra. We kind of like went quite heavy on the horror folklore part. I mean, that's kind of like part of the direction that I wanted to take. You know, the moon is coming to visit us. What does Moon see about human life and human history? Child. When is your family Child. coming to visit you? Mine's tonight. Yeah, mine's tonight. Friday. Tonight, okay, tonight is the night. Yeah. Yeah. Is your girlfriend coming? Yeah. Oh, I'm late to you. <laughs> One of my first acting roles coming out of university, so this was a really big help and a really big insight into what I could be doing. Because like we never had a place like this in Southampton, so when we came and I had a look up, like I came inside and I had a look, I was like, raw, like actually performing nice. Like I never had a free place like this, and I see actual good performance inside. You got what I'm trying to say to you? I've had a lot of people tell me I look like Nelly tonight. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> Is it your new doppelganger? I go shing shing, I go on my little trolley car and zoom. I'm gonna be your captain today, I'm Jackie. We can get to the moon and back in three minutes, which is truly amazing. Three, two, one. So now we are in arrival. So as you can see, you're going through this crazy buggy ride. It's also about moving and being in movement. It's about immaterial relationship to the world. So basically you go through this psychedelic buggy all the way around this big blob and you hear this kind of really extraterrestrial sound and then you're able to actually have this out-of-body experience as you go through. <laughs> This is the bats. I hear some bats. <laughs> oh, I'm inside this tunnel with LEDs and everything, and I can see some fishes. <laughs> they all react to the sound of the white noise. These are proper groundbreaking sounds of how animals with interact with the sound of the universe. It's all working, so that's why it looks Yeah, you've done amazing. I wish I would stay in it longer, but like, I was just falling asleep and everyone else was going. So I was like, you know, fair enough. I, just, I, just, I bet that was amazing. I bet that was kind of like, bro, were you drowsing or were you fully asleep? I was like dreaming stuff and then coming back. Yeah, and back, then you come back and you're, yeah, 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 that's yeah, yeah. what Then finally we are in Moon Cinema. In regards to kind of what the short films convey, there's important messages about counterculture as well as nightlife. So it's fresh new concepts as well as fresh new aesthetics as well within them. Thank you.
an experience I'll never forget. Aww. Okay. La, la. And did your girlfriend came? And what happened? Yeah. Did you kiss? Did you snog him? No, I don't think we She didn't enjoy it. She didn't? No? Because I'm quite proud of it. What? Yeah. I'm very really happy with it. When? I think it's, 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 very it's, it's very different. I just said it's very normal. Hey there, human. I am a swirling dust cloud in space. I am dust. So that's nice. Swirling at the edge of a big swirly thing, and I feel drunk. Whatever that is. Anyway, wanna know what I smell like? This is really for someone. The floor tomorrow. Have you seen the truck? No, because I don't have a mat in there. That's it. You know, with you a big push out your punch, uh -huh. push your hands out, rotate your fist over. Yeah. That's your impact right there. Hi, I'm Natasha Patterson from Pedro Youth Club. I'm one of the youth workers, the head coach for boxing, one of the directors for Tour de Moon and a sports facilitator for Moon Games for Tour de Moon. I love training guys and girls. I love training everybody, but also I like to bake cakes. Nelly, the only woman that really scars all the men. Really? I yeah. believe it. I've seen it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Nelly came to me for this bid two years ago, and I thought she was crazy. This woman came to me and said, we can do this, Natasha Patterson. We are gonna go for this bid. We are gonna make this happen. I done it. And it was one of the best mistakes I've ever made. We developed this with NASA scientists, and this playground with the chess mat is really there so that you can invent new rules, but not just new rules in sports and games, but also new rules for us, you know, humans. So very warm welcome to Moon Games. Here we are. This is the world's first and incredible, dynamic, interactive space where we're taking concepts that we enjoy about the Earth and we're expanding them into games and play. The idea is we have a laugh, but also we try and like take what we love about our planet, all the things that are maybe we need to do more of and think if we landed on the moon, how would we bring those concepts to life? So we do it through play. Making of Moon Games, that was inspired and influenced by children from the community as well. I got a group of children from my community and my youth club, and we got together with people from Tour de Moon and Unbox, and we expressed ideas of how we can make life on the moon and bring it down to earth and have this whole playground which is equal for all. They wanted equal opportunity, they wanted it to be you know, exclusive for everybody. So they wanted it to be a place where everybody was the same. Everybody was fair. No one was treated any way different. My name's Leon. Uh, I've been coming since I was a youth. They were in charge as well. They were able to make decisions. They were able to um, put ideas together. So that gave them that more incentive to work and to accomplish what they needed to accomplish. And it was mission completed. How she, I'm just going to put her as so she, I'm just going to ask her how she looks at the earth and how she, how, what she thinks about humans. The games were good, very active on different ways of communication, so like hand signals and all that. Oh, what is our relationship with the moon? Other than looking at it in the sky and obviously the moon's full of history in terms of like when we first stepped on it, even people understand that the tide is involved with the moon's gravitational pulls. And I think Sarge, as a Muslim, that has a lot to do with his religion in terms of the moon, um, in terms of fasting and Eid, I believe. I mean, the, the moon's nice, it looks nice. I like a full moon, to be honest. The full moon's quite nice. Uh, it's to do with my religion as well. You know, at Easter, when the first star goes up, that's, that's when you get your first meal, so. Make sure that the parents are aware they have to stay with their kids all around the playground. We had total chaos at Tour de Moon when we had loads of children on this inflatable playground and um, they were smashing everything. Everyone's gone rogue. Everyone's gone absolutely wild. What's different from today? There's uh, chaos. There's 
loads of kids today, but I'm not sure we're actually allowed to have kids on them. They were running, they were knocking down everything, they were bossing the balls. If you could find the parents, that would have been great. Half of them was at the side, they didn't even know where their kids were. I found babies walking around the corner, taking them back to their parents. It was madness. Honestly. Surely the guardian, whoever, like, should be here with him. Who, who is the parents of the... I don't want to make a scene because it's just a bit, you don't know his family life. You don't know why he's here by himself. Like, to isolate him even more is really sad. It's getting a bit out of control here, you know? This is all about bringing people together that are COVID. And everyone's, you know, they've gone through this whole... how you would and how you would appreciate, because you're always into galleries and things like that. They're not. They're going to see this and be free kind of thing. And I'm not being funny. I, I, have, I have children myself. I'm around children. And I know they're, they're, their imaginations, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're going to go wild when they see something, especially but in then, towns like this that have fuck all. But Tash, also when you're at boxing, we're all respecting each other. We have to because I'm teaching exactly. them something that's dangerous. Exactly. But this is dangerous as well this because... Is Dangerous, but this is not fun. meant. It's colourful. I know. There's flatables. But this is not meant. But when children see flatables, what do they do? Anywhere that's got flatables or anything that's bouncy and fun, they go mad. I didn't design this inflatable yeah. to endure a lot of people smashing it. They can yeah. damage themselves. They can hurt themselves. Yes, absolutely. So this is absolutely. also safety here. Yeah? So absolutely. I just want to make that clear to you that yeah. actually yeah. we need we we have the care of duty. Absolutely. I appreciate what you're saying, but at the same time, it's also of like course, of course, of practical course. things. Okay, all right. I leave you to it. I'm glad we resolved this. Yeah. Let's see round two. That was uh, an interesting one. It was a highlight and a low light. <laughs> Are you okay? We made a boy cry. Physically, yeah. But do you think that's the right policy? Don't give me the can of like you're making the wrong decision here because no, effectively. You it through, you rationally yeah, but that doesn't, you know, like it's not about talking about it rationally or like if we are talking about it rationally, then this is made for 16 plus. <laughs> I apologize if I um, abruptly talk to any of you. It's like sometimes it's just difficult, you know? Like I need to, yeah. I mean, that was... So the mission control will need to remain in very close contact with their kids at all time, yeah? Naum. You know what I love about Naum? Was his attire, his fashion and his style. I am here to be your captain, your pilot, your guide into this thing we call Moon Life. So Moon Life is a show to think about new inspiring Futures through performances, magic manifestos, and sensory delights, all in collaboration with our satellite, the Moon. Hello, my name is Naum. I'm an artist and musician, but all the things that I do are magic tricks and hypnosis and astronautics and all those strange things that give us perspectives from the very inside to the very outside. In Moon Live, often people didn't understand how we were able to put together sex workers, nightlife, youth counterculture, and space all together. Imagine that you go inside this space. We have a light show happening. People are getting moon teenies at the bar. We have a series of guests. You know, an astronaut comes in, and then a stripper, a bat, a comedian, an animator. <laughs> All together to reflect on, you know, on our shared future, 
uh, on Earth and beyond, but also addressing the, the challenges and the needs of these people today across the UK. So we're talking a lot with Moon Talks about the experiences of people uh, in the nighttime industry. Steps often to get into the club itself. I was turned away a number of times by bouncers saying that I couldn't get in, I was a fire hazard and didn't have a disabled toilet. I felt like if there was this kind of Moon Society that was being created um, for the future, I just felt like I wouldn't be able to go. The spirit of Moon Life is the punk spirit, right? Uh, because it was a, a really peaceful fuck you in a non-violent way in order to, you know, to feel people uncomfortable, to shake things, to shake the status quo. Moon Life was very unapologetic. Can I just say, this is the weirdest strip club I've ever worked in. <laughs> we always encouraged our guests to deliver their message uh, with a performative action. So if you're a dancer, you dance. If you're a poet, you, you, you read a poem. If you paint, you paint on stage. Two, one. We were not fixated in one way of doing things. We were learning and moving on and changing. And basically that's also our invitation to everyone that took part. We cannot always be the same. We need to like question ourselves. That's basically why I'm here tonight, is to tell you that we, strippers and sex workers, we deserve safety. Within the LGBT farming community, there is a huge amount of suicides because there's not a lot of acceptance. If we all are on the moon, then we're all equal we're all an alien, and then we will be able to embrace our differences. No, no, in space, there's too much space around in there. And then we start creating this federation of care, because uh, next to the stage, we, we had our typist, Dion, who's capturing every single line, every single gesture, created documents, with invitations to change something, to reimagine something that at some point we, we would deliver to policy makers and say, this is what the different communities are proposing. I'm Dion, I'm the typist, but you can call me Mixed Bitch. That's M-X-B-I-T-C-H-F-U-C-K-O-F-F. -F. I'm doing the receptionist thing. Oh, no. Janet literally has done every single job there is out there. I told the moon to the moon, the, you know, festival where I got to be everything. <laughs> so I was on Moon Live as well, so I was pretending to be the typist slash like stage manager and I had to act like I wanted to go home, which kind of, you know, ran true because I was quite hungry when I was doing it. And that hanger just came out um, and everyone was like, oh my God, I didn't know you could be so mean. And it was like, it was the hunger. Yeah? Okay. All right. Action. <laughs> Not very happy, but... No. <laughs> no. No. You'll have to get me a drink then. Okay, can anyone... There's a drink there. You're working. All right, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll work it out. I was a youth reporter for Tour de Moon. I did, like, a couple of podcasts and kind of, like, meant to evaluate the different pillars of the festival. So basically, first off, we've got like a bit of like a moon press zine, is it zine, mm -hmm. thing going about? Would you like to kind of look at it and tell That's us the cover. Yeah, what you think? Rating things, ranking things from one to five. So in terms of decolonization, in terms of, you know, being accessible, um, actually reaching out to the global majority and different communities. Even when you go somewhere and you don't necessarily get it, at least it's like, hmm, that's something new. That's interesting. Might not be a cup of tea, but you know, you got some like grandmas going home, like, I went somewhere, they drove me around this moon landscape thing, and they were shouting in my ear. So, you know, it's like creating an impact and hopefully, you know, changing people for the better, if you get what I'm saying. Oh, sure. Well, I'd love a holiday. I would pop to Saturn, but I don't want to fuck your gravity and accidentally cause the apocalypse. <sighs> Anywho. I 
as part of Tour de Moon, we worked with many different international partners in the science, technology, engineering, the arts, and mathematics realm. One of them was the Ghana Planetarium, which is led by Jacob and Jane Ashong. And so we collaborated with them on a moon bounce uh, experiment, which led us to actually send a famous song by Fela Kuti called ITT, International Tiff Tiff, all the way to the moon and back. In the case of Fela Kuti, unfortunately, he passed away. But his son, Sean Cuti, came on board on the track and made a special improvisation of saxophone. Hello, everybody. So I got a call like three weeks ago, and my friend Ayo says to me, some people want to send music to the moon. So I said, oh, the moon replies. I'm like, <laughs> we have sent this in, in space from the North Hemisphere while the moon was high in the sky because the moon is a very sensitive satellite uh, through moon bounce technology. So essentially radio waves which are invisible but are very much physical are beamed from uh, one station. They are reflected by the surface of the moon and they return back to Earth. So it's a completely a physical process and indeed it's like touching the moon. And then of course the sound that we receive is completely distorted and it's got as well a lot of the galaxy sounds. So here you go. So this is the moon bounce. Yeah. the directors of the Ghanaian Planetarium, Jacob and Jane Ashong. That's correct. The two legends of Accra have came up to pick us up at the airport. My name is Jacob Ashong. I'm a biochemist and I'm passionate about science and astronomy. So I decided to have a science center any planetarium. We started in 2000 and, well, 2008 we had the idea and 2009 we opened the planetarium. So it was built within a few months of us having the idea. Now, we went online and we collected information about planetarium and how to build it. We then put our pension, some pension money together to buy the cement, the pipes and all the materials. Actually, Jane did all the drawing. <laughs> she did a technical drawing. We show it to our friend who said, if you do it like that, it will be strong enough and it can stand. So we follow his instruction and we did the holes to hold the pipes. We wanted all school children to be inspired by science. And we thought planetarium and the science center would be ideal place for schools to bring children so they can learn about space space. The night sky so beautiful and mysterious. As planets marched across the sky, the moon waxed and waned, and occasional meteors fled across the horizon. So when you talk to us about moon bounce, we really got interested in the music or the sound going from Earth or near our planetarium, going to the moon and coming back. So I wrote a letter to Ministry of Defense. Luckily, the Chief of Defense invited me to the head office and he gave me to the radio operators to listen to me and come and help. So tell me how, what happened like. The van was, one was here, one was here. Two military vans with the radio things on it. And then they brought antenna. Can you see the nail? One, two, three, four. They hooked the antenna on it and the van was here and they pointed the, the main antenna from the van to the moon in this direction. And then we give them the pen drive, and then they started playing the music while aiming to the moon. And one radio in another van was recording what comes back a few seconds later. We are now forming Astronomical Society 
of Ghana Radio Club so that the people in Holland and Italy will be in communication with somebody at National Communication Authority. They, get, they form a club now. <laughs> Hello, Janie. Oh my God, you're here. Yeah, I'm just in Ghana trying to set up the flatable. You already? What is this? Okay, this is gonna inflate slowly. What are we doing to this poor space woman? She just need. She's gonna go up. Push up her. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. This is what we want to say. Isn't she so cool? <laughs> Okay, let's get Mission Moon game started. Are we in Mission Control? Where are we? Are we on the moon? We are looking for the moon. Hey, where is the moon? Hey, moon, where are you? Okay, I can see it here. Okay, one, two, three. If you lot disappear, I'll still be here. Sure, I'd miss you, but I just hang out with the stars. They're not so bad. I haven't seen funding like this so open-ended um, given to artists anywhere in the world to work with anyone they want to. We've created some amazing um, relationships for the future. We've built some new networks. Um, and all of those people that we deal with directly they are, nobody said, oh, that was a waste of time. That wasn't worth it. Well, you could see things were really exciting at the beginning and then we would hit bumps and then things would be going along really well. And then there was a major panic moment in every project where I think people were working to their limits. People were losing their um, ability to believe in themselves. And that's, that's where we played a role was to really help people to, um, to support them to keep going and to not fall off the edge of the cliff because we believed in them too. It was a stressful time, but it was also great because it's the first time a cultural project like this has been done in this way and everybody was up for it despite it being challenged. Some people got flags. Yeah, everyone, we are 20 minutes before 12. Let's start to get hurry up. Behind the scenes yeah. footage, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm not even ready with my look yet, like. Oh, I saw that you were, you were dealing with something. I was like, I'll leave that. I was like, I'll leave that there. How's everything going? Uh, it's going. Going. <laughs> because there is some really lovely scene happening downstairs with all the balloons. Get that. What are you up to, Ravit? Oh, I'm just dying balloons to bean bags. Usual stuff. Promo again, it's a photo op. Oh, it's a photo op. So just so you know, oh, oldest no, 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 no. club of the UK, 1929. Uh, Elizabeth Taylor was one of their main funders, as it happens. And this is what is really exciting as well with the moon, is like when you look at the moon, you know, the moon is really a landscape for us and a character for us to imagine how life could be different. And I'm extremely thrilled and excited to be here finishing the festival at Pedro Youth Club, because Pedro Youth Club is really the heart of everything that this festival represents. So it's been an honor to be a part of Tour de Moon. It has created so much ideas and wonderful platforms and I've met so much fantastic people. And I've also been able to bring it back home to Pedro, where we can get the local community involved as well. I want to officially say well done to Tour de Moon for bringing this to Hackney, London after being all over the country. And we are now officially open, so you can enjoy yourself officially open, guys. Well done. You made like an amazing space for the community here at Pedro Youth Club. You took it over and the day where you took it over, everything got different. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, this is what we need. You know, we can't, so we don't care what anyone is says in the world. We're always going to have kids, kids become teenagers and adults. So where are we going to put them? What are we going to do with them? You know, it is the oldest, our uh, one of the second oldest youth club left in London. You know, we've been going 70 odd years now. You know, so we want to celebrate the 100 years with the help of you guys. and to keep the next generation with something to do, somewhere for them to go. If we have more youth club 
more youth worker, we probably don't have the problem we have today because people will be coming and teaching some form of skill, you know? And that's what we need back. All the youth center them instead of closing them down. Hello, Mr. King speaking. <laughs> Where are you, Mr. King? I'm in Hackney right now. I'm in the last leg of the tour. What are you telling me? Well, the people from the moon want to wonder where and what time the finale of Hackney and Tour de Moon is. Well, we're starting right now. Uh... the idea of trying to figure out a way to really prompt radical imagination, to say that things the way they are are not the way they should be. And that's why I really wanted to collaborate with Pedro Youth Club. That's why I wanted Natasha Patterson to be my co-director, together with people from the technological realm. So we had WeTransfer as well, uh, which is uh, led by Damien Bradfield. We have the Vinyl Factory, who made together a lot of record for us. What's happening? We're moving these ridiculously heavy boxes of vinyl into the office. Product really brings into my lab before stopping. Is there space in your office for it? Um, no, <laughs> not at all. Sorry. We did a lot of moon bounce, we sent music to the moon and back. Uh, we also collaborated with Majid Majid, with the director of Union of Justice, who is running a charity and was the former Lord Mayor of Sheffield. And we also collaborated finally with uh, the CETI Institute, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Institute, with Dr. Frank Marches. So all of these people together, we did this festival. I hope that we have built this federation of care so that you know all of these young people now know of each other, they can relate to each other, they can support each other, so that if there is another crisis, again, like COVID or anything else, then we have, in a way, built a very strong network of people that believe in each other, support each other, and actually will very likely build completely new radical futures. Most I like, want to thank each and every single one of you for my different colors of a mango. Sometimes I'm red, sometimes I'm yellow, sometimes I'm bruised, sometimes I'm rotten, sometimes I'm ready for the eating. Um, <laughs> I'm like, never without fail, like I know I can like fall off the tree and land on good ground with you all. And that means a lot. There's a moon coming in, coming, spinning, winning like a vortex, burning backwards, like a little, little boy. I think it's very, very rare that you come across a group of human beings who impress upon you so much, yeah. you know, of like their heart, their spirit, their being, their creativity. I can only speak for myself, but Andrew and I have spoken about this a lot, and um, On the count of three, we are doing a collective release. So on the count of three, feel free to let out a breath, a yell, a word, anything you would like. One, two, three. Tell me the end. The end of what? The end. The end. What is it? The end of the moon. What, what does that look like? Knock your fucking block off. Knock your fucking block off. Knock your fucking block off. Then record it on a knock ya. Almost everyone on the farm has been working on it. Oh, awesome. Everyone, my kids, everyone, the dogs been driving around.
two years, like being in permanent flex is kind of like, it can be the routine. We are coming down to shut down your city with some vibes. Vibes! With some vibes. Vibes! Yeah, at the end of the day, we're people from different breeds, different backgrounds. I would just put some flavors into your ears, that's it. Lock off. When the party lock off, we recording on our Nokia's. <laughs>